so it's always difficult off the end of a kind of two week uh, break. But what what's the kind of team news that you can that you can bring us as or not everyone back yet? Um, well, it'll do some of them good, I think, to have a break um, because we managed to get some uh, good work into them, particularly this week as we don't play till Monday. Um, so the likes of Jay Rodriguez is back on the grass uh, with us. That is training with us. Matt Lowen's on the grass, but not not with us yet. Um, Cork is a bit longer, you know, situation, but he's making progress. Um, I know Johan got some minutes. I mean, he's he's a cautious, uh, sorry, precaution. He's come back to us, so having to be a little bit careful with him. But he got some minutes while he's away. As did Robbie Brady coming along. They're not back yet, obviously. Um, Popey got a game, of course, which is great. Um, and the only one that's we're waiting on news on is Bailey Peacock, obviously, who, who you know didn't didn't uh, get in the game last night because of an injury pre the game. So we're waiting on him. But things are looking slightly better, and the players are looking um, hopefully fitter. We managed to get some work into them. Like I say, this has actually worked for us this Monday game because we've got them extra days where we can, you know, just push the players slightly harder um, to increase their fitness. Yeah, like you hinted there, still a, a pretty decent list of those who are doubts but the, the break given that situation will have hopefully done you done you good as a squad yeah I mean look we, we you know we've been through a bizarre period from last season coming out of lockdown and the nine games um you know got a break and then come back in and I, I didn't suspect that anything other than players would be fit for task um apart from Corky we knew that one was a bit longer and possibly louts but you know, the other guys, it's just been one of them strange occurrences, you know, where for the first time probably ever in my time here, we've had a double period of injuries. We had a, we have had injuries before, but not sort of two different periods of them and so many. Um, but like I say, we, we can only hope that once they're fit, they stay fit. And then we've got a, a more balanced squad to look forward to using. And does that explain that you're obviously less than um, the start that you would have wanted to your Premier League campaign? No, I, don't, I try not to make excuses. I think I still believe in the players that we've had fit. I still believe in the young players who are supporting the first team group and learning as they go. Um, I don't think we're ever a million miles away. The margins are tight. We certainly, you know, we were right in the game against Southampton, second half against uh, Newcastle, but just too many basic errors and, and that costs you if you don't get them right. Um, coming out of sort of a strange pre-season as well with the stretch in the squad through injuries, but... I try not to make excuses. These are facts, you know, but the, 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 the performances have not been too far away. We need to tidy up at both ends of the pitch. We know that. Um, but I do think that them players getting fit again, they had that in-house competition, that in-house edge, if you like, you know, to the group um, because they've got to work for their shirts. West Brom, obviously in a similar position to yourselves. Do you think that they're going to struggle this season? I don't know. It's very early yet. Um, you know, everyone wants to ideally get points on the board early, as do we. Um, we're slightly longer in the tooth in the Premier League than, than Slav's group. I like Slav a lot, by the way, as a, as a fella, not just a manager, but, you know, his group are maybe slightly... Um, some of them have played in the Premier League quite obviously, some not as um, experienced with the ups and downs of it, maybe. We are. We are experienced with that. We know that you can have tough spells in the Premier League and I think we have the, the, the makeup and the mentality of how you come through them spells. It's yet to be seen this season, of course, but, you know, it's, it's part of the challenge. It's very... The Premier League is a strange beast in the sense that when you get on a roll and you look back and you think, how have we not won a game there? How have we not got a point? And it just... It suddenly is gone... And then the next, you know, lump of games come, which is coming now. And then equally, you can turn that around and it all looks different. So, like I say, we, we've got a group that have been through it before. That doesn't guarantee anything. It just means they've got that bit of experience. Um, so I'm really focusing on that. I'm not really worried about others. Um, I'm really focused on our group and how we maintain the focus and increase performances to get points on the board. Uh, you mentioned there about, you know, now the, the game's coming up and, you know, the old saying, isn't it? There's no easy game in the Premier League, but I mean, four, five of your next seven are, you know, what you call the the big the big hitters: Spurs, Chelsea, City, Everton, Arsenal. There's obviously been in the Premier League now a while. These clubs don't 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 scare you. They don't throw anything in your way that you don't believe you can cope with. But it is quite a tough run on paper, isn't it? Well, I've got to be honest, until you've just reminded me, I was quite calm. Uh, now I'm not so calm, so <laughs> thanks for that. I was having quite a nice morning, and now you've just interrupted that uh, by reminding me of the games that are coming. I try and work on a one-game basis, so uh, that's not so easy now. <laughs> um, 
No, look, you you have got to play everyone home and away. It's a, it's I know it's a simple cliched uh, answer, but it's true. We've been there before. We know all these challenges. Um, we know that one bad run or tough run doesn't make your whole season. It is a season's work for clubs like us. I've always said that. Um, and the likelihood, not not you know possibilities and probabilities, I talk about a lot. Possibly you'll have a clean season where you don't have tough runs. Probably, when you teams like us, you probably are going to have tough runs of games and tough spells of points or not getting points. So it's not to be feared. It's just a reality, or we see it as a reality of being in the division. But like I say, the possibilities are always there. You know, it's an interesting situation. No crowds. We're all wondering how it affects teams. I mean, I think the last, you know, games with particularly the Liverpool game and the Man United game, I mean, they're bizarre results. They're not results, I don't think, that are the norm. Um is that because of no crowds? Possibly. Is it, you know, last season it was just new, so everyone got on with it, uh, as in the last nine games. Now is it something that players are finding different and difficult? I think possibly. Um, so that may be altering some of the performances and some of the detail in the game. Because um, crowds do stimulate an effect on players, quite obviously, and on, and on managers and, and uh, staff. So I think there is something in that. But we want to be on the right side of them. So if teams have a, a quiet day because there's not a crowd in and we can have a very strong day then you can still take points off anyone in this division yeah on that because I, I was looking at some research that's done about the effects in terms of points on the empty stadiums and Burnley um up, you know up there with the teams that have struggled the most as a result result of that I mean one of your strengths if you like hopefully you agree is that clubs don't like coming to Turf Moor and the crowd's got a lot to do with that I mean are you Really now fed up of the fact that the crowds aren't in the stadium. Well, I think it's a generalised view to start with. I think you'll find in the last nine games of last season, forgetting about crowds, I think we got a fair old points return, you know. So I think we've done all right without crowds, to be fair. In fact, better, better than all right, I would suggest. Um, this season, we've had a few different challenges. It is helpful, I believe, to have crowds in the stadium. Um, I think more players than not do react to the crowd and do react to that stimulus a crowd can bring. Um there are a clutch of players, I believe, who probably, or possibly, not probably, prefer no crowds. It maybe just ease that tension off a little bit and they maybe feel a bit more free to play. I don't know. Uh, but I think a stimulus of a crowd is important. It's not as important as what's going on. We all know that. Um, but if things can be solved sooner rather than later and we get crowds or some version of crowds back in stadiums, I think that'd be a, a brilliant thing. Just finally from me, I know it's gone away now, but it's the first chance we've had to speak to you since Project Big Picture was mooted. What, are your, what were your thoughts on it? Well, I think we're all willing to find a way um, as people in football or what can be, what way can be found to help throughout football. Um, decisions have been made from people who are way more in the, the loop than me, that's for sure. So they've got a, a much uh, more in-depth view of the, the minutiae of what they were trying to achieve. Um, the Premier League have obviously decided not. Um, within that, what I would say, if, you, if you're talking about this, or the, the, what seems to be the narrative is the top six having most of the power or, or uh, uh, most of the decision-making power. Well, I suppose if, you, if you're talking about looking after everyone in the lower leagues, then in theory, to look after the Premier League, you share that power. So therefore, in, in possible terms, they should say, OK, we want to look after them, but we're going to share that power across the league because... Simply because everyone's earned the right to be in the Premier League. You know, we're going into five out of the last six seasons in the Premier League. So we've earned our right. We deserve to be there. We've proved that. Um, it's an ongoing challenge, but we are there. So I think it's fair to say everyone should have a say. Everyone should have their agreed moments of, of who gets what for what reason. Um, and if that can work in the bigger picture, obviously it hasn't uh, worked in this case, then I'm sure everyone will be willing to play their part. But at the minute... There's people in way, way more depth of knowledge of situations of what can be done, what should be done than me, but that's just an outside view. Yeah, me, me too. Thanks so much for your time, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Gary. Casey Shanahan from KLP. Are you ready, Casey? I know you just joined. Can you hear us, Katie? Hi, yes, I can. Sorry for joining late to this press conference. Um, I just wanted to ask you, um, Sean, Ashley Barnes scored a brilliant overhead kick last time at the Hawthorns. How is he coming on in terms of fitness and how much of a difference does it make having players like him back in the squad? 
Yeah, he's a good player. We know that he's an effective player. He's he's part of a group, and the group responds to him. They like him. They they you know he's a he's a character around the group. All of them things on and off the pitch, he's become an important part of the the team and the club. Um, well recognised in these parts for what he does on the pitch, and also by our group from what he's like around the group and around our training uh, area. So he's certainly someone we're, we're we're pleased to have back fit. He looks fit. He looks sharp and well, and getting he'll only get fitter and sharper from playing. Um, I think I've always said it. We've got a, I think a clutch of good strikers there. You know, Vids is fitter. He's sharper. Um, Woody's always got a goal in him, or certainly by the, his record here, he's got a goal in him. And J Rod has been on the grass with us this week and training, so hopefully he'll be at least available. So it's not just about Barnsley. He is an important player and has been here, and I'm sure he will be continuing on. Um, but we've got other players as well who we recognise as being very good players. How much has the international break helped you and the players reset and refocus ahead of the busy winter schedule? Yeah, I think the the, the first schedule was tough for, for different reasons, injuries, etc., but also the game schedule. It slows slightly on the game schedule now. Hopefully, the, we're getting more players um, uh, fit. We are factual at this moment, but obviously we don't play till Monday. And the way things have gone, I don't want to, don't want to talk too much about it because we seem to lose someone every other every other week. Um, but no, I mean, I'd like to think that we've got a group who are coming back together, um, a mentality that's definitely intact, a focus that's there. They know the challenge. We, we've got an, a, a group now that have become more experienced because of the years of playing in the Premier League. And like I say, we you know we, we know the challenges. We know that you can have tough spells in the Premier League. Ideally, you get points on the board early. It's just a, a sort of a safety net, if you like, to get them points there, and everyone feels right about themselves. But we've had tough starts before, um, you know, and come through it. So that is the task to come through a tough start, settle things down, and keep delivering good performances. And just one on the game: West Brom have only lost once to Burnley in your last six meetings in the Premier League. What are you expecting from Slaven Village's side on Monday? Well, I'm always interested in them stats. You know, it doesn't guarantee the next one. It's always a strange one that um, we've we've dispelled so many. Well, I got it. It was like everyone we played seemed to be someone we had a bad record about. It was just incredible: Ipswich and Bolton and Wigan and Blackburn, of course. Everyone we seem to have. So we've dispelled them this many times. I'm certainly not worried about the, the past. I'm more worried about the future. Um, no, what I'd expect is a, a, a hungry group who want to be in the Premier League. They know they're going to have to fight to do so. You know, an, an indifferent start, but that can happen. It's tough in the Premier League. Um, and Slavin's a fellow I like. I like him as a bloke and I like him as a manager. Um, but he'll know that when, when the whistle blows, that means nothing. It all goes out the window because we both want our teams to win. Wonderful. Thanks very much, Sean. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. Scott, <coughs> Scott Excuse me. Sure. Yeah. Sean, sure, just, just, just picking up that point you, you touched on before about the games coming up after West Brom. You've never really been one, have you, to identify certain fixtures as being more important than others. So I suppose that, that, that applies again on, on Monday. It's a season's work, you know, but we've found from the season we've had in the Premier League that it is possible to take points from, from everywhere in the Premier League. It is obviously statistically more difficult at certain grounds um, and certain situations, certain teams. But it doesn't mean you don't take points. So you can't just, I feel, rely on just the games that you think are must-wins because every game's a must-win in the Premier League. You know, it's, it's a story of a season for us. We've proved that down the seasons. You know, when we had a tough start in the, the Europa League season... It wasn't till Christmas when we really fired, but we did fire. And if you look at the second half of that season, I, I, I think we were top five for form and points. So, you know, it is a season's work. I don't, I don't go into a season. I've said every season, I say it's a restart. It's not a... And then I don't throw my words around lightly, as you definitely know, Scott. You know, it is a restart for us. And we've shown that this season. You know, we've, we've had to remodel from within. We've had to try and look after players within. We haven't spent money or no big money. Obviously, Dale coming in and Will, but... You know, no, no big money. It's, it's part of the model of the club. That's the way it goes. So we have to keep remodelling the thinking inside of the building. And, and, and if you expect there'd be no challenges within that, you'd be naive, I think. So I understand the challenge of what it is. Our players understand that. They know it's no breeze going through the Premier League season. But I remind you, we have got experience here of that and we understand it. So the calmness that comes, the focus that comes, the attention to detail on the training ground and then delivering in games, that's our focus now. Because if we get that right, you've got a way better chance of getting points on the board. Yeah, you're not a novice team, are you? Particularly now in Premier League levels and you've gone through runs where you've, you've found wins difficult to come by. So I guess as a group of players, you can, you can fall back on those previous experiences. 
Yeah, I mean, like I say, it doesn't. It's it's one of those things I talk about a lot, you know, and I talk about it openly with the players. By the way, the last one doesn't guarantee the next one, but that equally applies if you're having a tough run. You know, because you're having a tough run, it doesn't mean the next one's a tough, tough game. You know, you can you can change everything on any given moment in football. So, you know, I remind the players of that. And I, I certainly have done before this um, international period. And I'll be reminding them when they all get back together this Saturday. In terms of Dale Stevens, how has he settled in? Yeah, good. He, we knew that he'd need a bit more fitness and sharpness, um, but he's getting used to the group. He's from this area originally anyway. So uh, I don't think there's a problem with him, you know, coming back up this way. But yeah, he's, he's adapting to the challenge well and he's getting involved with the group uh, nicely, which most players do here. Everyone knows we've got a good culture and environment here and most players are accepted very quickly. And j just a final one, in terms of, of, of this international break, are you hoping that, you mentioned a, every season's a restart for you, are you hoping that with a few extra bodies back, hopefully not too, too long away, that this international break could be a bit of a restart for you? Yeah, I mean, we want that. We want that in-house competition I speak about a lot. I think it's important. We've got um, some very good players have been missing. And, we, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, I had seven missing for us. That's a lot. For any club, that's a lot. But it certainly is for us. Um, and there's seven players who you could consider are, are more likely to certainly be in the squad and, and po possibly start, probably start a number of them. So... You know, I think everyone would miss that. On the other hand, I do believe in the group we've got. Is you know, a lot of talk about the markets. Do we want to sign players? Yes. Um, is that a challenge ongoing? Yes. Is it likely that we sign anyone before the end of the window? No, I don't think so. But do I believe in the squad we've got? Yes. And when they're all fit, it looks different. It's just that because there's been that many injuries, it looks so sparse. It's almost like, well, where are all their players? But when they're all fit, you suddenly look and you go, okay, yeah, I forgot about that one and that one and that one and that one. And then all of a sudden, the bench looks better. The first 11 looks better and it all looks a bit rosier. Would I like to bring some players in? Yes, I would. Um, is that an ongoing challenge here? It certainly is. Always has been though, hasn't it? Yep, it certainly has. Cool. Good luck on Monday. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. Ian, <clears throat> Hi, Sean, how are you? Yeah, good. Um, look at the challenge ahead, West Brom. Um, they've, they've been involved in some pretty high-scoring games so far this season. I'm thinking the defeat at Everton and their, their game with Chelsea. Um, proving they can score, but they also can concede goals. Well, amazingly, most teams can. Um, they have the ability to score and concede. Um, it's getting it right at both ends, which is the key, and I don't think that's easy, and it's even harder in the Premier League. We fell foul of that ourselves so far. We we haven't quite scored the goals that we wanted to. We haven't taken the chances that we've created. And we've let in a couple of soft goals, which have cost us. So, you know, the, the, the learning curve is there for all to see in the Premier League. You have to get both ends of the pitch right. And we all talk, well, especially modern football, the media constantly talk about the bit in between and who's playing what style. But trust me, it still comes down to both boxes. You've got to get them right before you worry about anything else. So... We certainly need to focus on that, which we are doing. Um, I'm, I can only imagine that Slav and his group are trying to look at that as well. It is the number of goals we've seen, which is an enormous amount, if I only have had three or four game weekends. Is it because there are no fans in the stadium? Well, I think it's beginning to look different from that view. I mean, in the, the nine games coming out of lockdown last season, I think I thought the teams did great with the intensity, the performances, because we all wondered how that was going to work. But it was such a novel period. Then you get a break and now it's sort of looking at the moment anyway, due to you know what's obviously going on in the world. Um, it's looking like it's become a more normal that there's not going to be crowds in. So whether the fan, uh, sorry, whether the, the players have kind of maladapted to that in a way, it's almost like, oh, right, it feels weird now. Whereas the nine games, if you remember back, most people were suggesting that by the beginning of this season, there'd certainly be some numbers coming back into the stadiums and then build on that. Well, that hasn't happened. So therefore, do I think it's affecting certain games and certain situations? Maybe the detail, maybe the, the edge, if you like? Possibly. I think it's more um, obvious now than it was in the nine games that when we came back last season. So I think there's a possibility, um, but it's hard to prove because, you know, they're human beings. It's hard to, you know, we, we, if we could all work out each other, we'd all be in a lot better place, but it's not that easy. Are you hinted there? It doesn't look like we're going to get fans back anytime soon, although uh, apparently it's OK to go to the London Palladium to watch Arsene Wenger, but you can't get a football match to watch uh, Burnley uh, play. You said that. Uh, Ian said that. Ian Abraham said that. Not me. Not Sean sure, Knights, just to be clear. <laughs> I did I did say that. Um, what, did you, what do you make of the idea of the fans paying per view for watching games going forward? 
Well, I think if in what's going on in the world, I think that if that's a way of balancing what's you know appropriate for the TV and the media streams, then I, I, I can't see that big a problem with it, only in the sense that if you're a family and you regularly go to watch football, um, I, I don't know what the, is it for like 15 quid or something, 14, 95, 15 quid, then for what's going on in the world at the moment, to have football back, to have it on your screen, you know, in the safety of your home and doing all the right things that we're all encouraged to do, then, you know what, I'm bound to be biased because I'm in it and I, and I love the game. So therefore, would I pay? Yes, I would. Um, is it a challenge for some families? I'm sure it is, um, particularly what's going on. But, you know, I, I'm only speaking as a football fan, not just a manager. And, and for me, then I would, yeah, I'd, I'd pay that and I'd sit in my family and whoever is interested in my family in football within the rules and sit there and, and enjoy, hopefully enjoy a game. You spoke a little earlier about Project Big Picture. Um, you played and managed throughout the leagues. Um, was the only positive out of it the fact that we've got the conversation going? Um, well, I think the... I don't think the conversation wasn't there. I've got to be honest, because we were asking about it last season and this season. I was being asked through all of your media, you know, different media outlets about what I thought we could do to try and do something for the lower leagues. Having played in them, I know how important them, them clubs are. Uh, my son's at once, so of course I'm well aware of the importance of that. Um, it is difficult, and then the whole world. I did suggest who's bailing out who. You know, who who football often comes straight under the, the the microscope and saying why are they not doing this, that, and the other. I was only trying to bring balance when I said are other businesses under that microscope? Are they trying to look after the smaller business? I, I, I don't know. It doesn't seem as obvious to me, but I mainly live in my bubble of football, so I'm not suggesting I know everything about the the country and what's going on. Um, so it's just a balanced view. You know, if, if everyone at the top has got to be looking after situations or businesses that are maybe suffering more so, then that may be the case. But if they're not, then you've got to bring balance and go, why, why is football suddenly meant to be solving everyone's situation? Um, if there's something that can be done and they've decided that the, the project couldn't be done, then I think we'd all go for it. It's finding that balance. It's finding the right way of doing it in which all parties can buy into but going back to my heartstrings, then I played I played in the lower leagues for half my season and thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, I had a, had a really good career for half my season playing in Division One and Division Two. Do I want them to suffer? No, I don't. If there can be a way found from all parties, whether it's the government, whether it's the people, whether it's the Premier League or football in general, then I hope somehow a way can be found. Last one, I'm sorry to take up so much of your time. Um, Chris Wood could have played at Wembley for New Zealand against England next month. That game's now been called off New Zealand... Uh, for various reasons because of COVID. Do you think with various players coming back from this international break, having tested positive, it's time to put international football on the back burner for a while? Um, I, I certainly won't be making that decision. Uh, I, I think the protocols in football, having been through them for a long time now, are certainly in place. I think we're miles in front of what the country's protocols are and how we're trying to conduct ourselves definitely in the workplace. I can't... Um, you know, I have, a, I have a private life, which I, I try and live by the government rules and the country's rules. But in our workplace, you know, and I can only imagine that the international setups are very, very stringent. You know, what we're going through here is still considerably in front of what is asked in, in general life as regards distancing, cleanliness, all the protocols, testing. So I can only assume that the international scene is like that. Are there going to be cases? Of course there are. The, the, the world is increasing cases. Well, there's a fair chance that footballers, as I said, they can't live in our bubble all the time. They do have families. They do have lives. They do have private lives. They are allowed to live by the rules of the country. Um, and when they do that, if it's unfortunate that they catch something and, and catch COVID, then all we can do is make sure that we take them out of the situation as quick as possible and play our part in trying to contain any situation that, that happens. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Sean. Hiya. Uh, just a quick one from me. Uh, you mentioned you speak openly to players uh, in between games. When would you start to worry about results not picking up? I don't think... I've never been one to worry too much. I've, I'm always a realist. Um, I mean, you know, there's, there's always a, a concern in every moment in anything in football. Um, but but I, I don't really worry. I, I think we plan, and you know that's my, my. I suppose if in a way of worrying, we we plan and we rethink and we add the detail and we look at ourselves. I always look at myself first with the staff as well, and we look at what we're doing 
Um, then we add in the realities of the challenge currently with injuries, etc. Then we add in the, uh, the realities of the challenge with the games we're playing because we remind ourselves it is the Premier League. It is a very, very tough league. Um, and then we process all that and, and look to add all that together and move forward. So that's all it is. We just work with the players con on a continuous basis, like all do, by the way, to get the best out of them. Because um, if we do that as an individual and as a collective, then you get results. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Alex. you. Appreciate that. Alex James, Lancashire Morning, Sean. Morning. Just um, just going back to the injuries there, unless unless I missed it. Did you mention Ben Mee and, and how he's getting on in his recovery? No, good point. That fella Ben Mee, the captain. It's a fair point you make. Um, he's making progress. It's been a long-winded one for Ben, a really awkward one, because you know it was an injury we thought he'd certainly be around it at the beginning of the season, and he hasn't been. He, he had a slight re-injury um, on his way back, which kind of set him back a little bit. He's back on the grass currently and feeling a lot easier, but he is going to need an, a, a period, you know, to get him back to full fitness. So um, there is better news, but it's still, you know, he's not close at the moment. So in terms of availability from those who, who missed the Newcastle game, it's looking like just Jay Rodriguez at the minute then, is it, for, for Monday night? Jay, Jay Rod should be, as long as the next few days go okay, because he's, he's managed the last two days, so he should be. Um, okay, Johan, we're hopeful on as well. He had a tight groin while he was away and came back, but we're hopeful that that's settling down, so it shouldn't be a, a major concern. Um, and just general fitness and sharpness for some who are just slightly behind the curve. You know, with players coming out of minor injuries, like with Taki and then um, Barnsley, not a minor injury, obviously, but more of a situation to get, excuse me, that true sharpness and that match fitness. He's showing good signs of that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not just the literal injuries, it's the players getting back to that real um, fit, fit sort of edge that we provide when we perform. And you mentioned there, it's, it's unlikely you're going to bring anybody in between now and, and tomorrow evening when the window shuts. How do you sort of assess this transfer window, both from your perspective at, at Burnley and the general sort of perspective of, of life in football at the moment, given the, the financial implications of the pandemic? Well, it's a strange one. I think the financial implications are, are for some, it seems, not for others. You know, when you look at some of the fees being paid for players, there's still a lot of money going around. Um, you know, money's always been a, a, an issue here. You know, it's always been something that's uh, highly debated from in, inside with myself and the chairman and the board. Inevitably, they make the decisions. I made that clear for a long, long time. Now everyone thinks it was last season because of COVID. It wasn't at all. I've made that clear for many, many seasons. Talked about stretch, how we can stretch the model. We're in very good shape financially. I know that. Um, but the finance is still there to safeguard the club. And that's the, one of the paramount concerns for the, the chairman and the board. So, you know, I've always worked within the parameters and the guidelines that are given to me. And that's what I intend to do. You know, these players, what you do forget I must reiterate, you do forget we've got some very good players here. You know, so do we want to freshen it? Do we want to bring players in? Or would I have brought players in? Yes, I would. Um, you need to know what's available to do that, both players and finance. That's always a bit tricky here. Um, but I don't forget the group that I've got. I don't forget the quality and the depth of the group in the experience, particularly not always numbers, that I've got here. So I certainly believe that this group is more than capable. Um, and now it's about getting that, showing it on the pitch and getting results. And just lastly for me, I guess part of this window then was about keeping those players that you've got and the likes of James Tarkovsky, Nick Pope and the, the ones that we read about who have speculated with moves as well. Despite the fact you might not be able to stretch as you would have liked to from, from your budget perspective, you have retained what you would consider your core players over this, this last sort of six-week period. Yeah, well, I did say it was unlikely they were going anywhere. Um, so that is the, the, the different kind of strength that we've got as a club, is the strength to say no. Um, there have been years in the past when we couldn't do that, but we can now. So that is important to us to have that ability and that strength financially, which we certainly have. The next stage is, is how much is available to actually go and help strengthen a situation. And that's always a, a, a big conversation. That might change then. I know I said last week, sorry, Pete. Are you hoping that might change that that conversation might move on a little bit more. You might be able to stretch a little bit more and, and, and build that sort of budget. I need ways of We'll it's see. It's you know, it's, there's never any givens here. You know, because I've, I've, I've said to you before, I've never had a budget, so it's, it's it is tricky. You know, when you don't you don't have a budget, it's tricky to imagine how much is there and how much is not there. So um, we'll see. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, John. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Hi, Sean. Oh yeah. Um, I was also, could you just tell us a little bit about um, Ali Koyiki because we were reading that um, perhaps he was going to be uh, joining Bristol Rovers um, after turning down a contract. What, what was the situation there? Yeah, that's in, that's in the off. So we'll wait and see that that gets done. 